Martinez, Teeny Cox, you're an observer at the October parliamentary elections in Georgia and concluded that they had been competitive and freedoms had been observed. But clearly since then, something must have gone wrong because the November elections saw the, some of the opposition parties calling for a boycott of the vote. So what exactly is the state of play in Georgia with regard to elections? In the debate that we had uh, today, some people said that the report of our International Elections Observation Mission in which the Assembly participated and I chaired on behalf of our uh, uh, delegation said that the report was too positive, other ones said it was too negative, but it is neither positive or negative, it's objective, it intends to be objective. And it says that if the elections were relatively free, fundamental freedoms were more or less ex uh, 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 respected, but on the other hand, the elections were not fair because the governing party uh, used too much its possibilities as governing party and it it did not respect the line that there should be in a democracy between the government, uh, the state and the ruling party. Uh, especially the, the way of the financing of the campaign was very intransparent. We criticized that, we did that in line with earlier recommendations of the parliamentary assembly, but also of uh, the, the OSCE uh, ODIR uh, observers. So, yes, these elections were rather free. 48 parties participated, two blocks. 10 parties got elected into parliament, which is quite unique for Georgia. But at the same time, as said, they did not meet the criteria of fair elections. And we, as an assembly, always try to see, have these elections been free and fair? So, objective judgment is... Yes, the freedom was not the problem, the fairness was. There, there seem to be an awful lot of very small parties in Georgia, and that's never a recipe for sound democracy, is it, when you have too many breakaway parties like that? Uh, I, I, can, I cannot confirm or uh, deny that I'm coming from the Netherlands and we have an awful lot of parties in, in, in our parliament. We do not have even big parties. They are all more or less small or medium. Uh, so the, the number of parties represented in Parliament is not an argument. The fact whether they behave as true representatives of those who elected them. And therefore, I urged in the debate this morning, but also already in, in, in Tbilisi after the elections, that the ruling party should invest, should take care that all complaints about the elections are investigated. And on the other hand, those who are elected in Parliament should not boycott the parliament because that goes against the very essence of elections, namely to represent those who voted for you. That's why I called together with the co-rapporteurs of the Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly for a true meaningful dialogue between ruling party and uh, opposition party. It doesn't make sense that uh, the complaints are neglected and the, the reforms on the, in, in campaign financing do not take place on your end. It does not make sense to be elected and then the first act that you do is say, but I will not represent the voters who elected me. So there's a lot of work to do. Uh, Georgia is under the monitoring procedure of the Council of Europe's Assembly. The co-rapporteurs will do that. And there were calls also to send a post-electoral mission to Georgia. We will sort this out first with our co-rapporteurs because they are the first who are in the lead. But there's a lot, indeed, there's a lot to do in order to make the electoral process more free and, uh, ex uh, and for all more fair next time. Walking away from Parliament, though, choosing to boycott Parliament, that doesn't really help anyone, does it? And they called for a, a, a boycott in, if, among voters. The turnout was less than 27% as a result. I mean, that, that's not a recipe for democracy, is it? Um, this is my personal opinion, but if you stand for election, the result cannot be that if you are elected, then you say, sorry, but I will not go uh, uh, and to take my seat. That is an obligation. Everybody takes upon it, him, him or herself when participating in elections. Of course, the circumstances may be bad, but politicians who are looking for an easy job, they should uh, uh, search another job. It's uh, especially for politicians in difficult circumstances to come with to a solution. So I hope, I really hope, and I think this call was made by the whole international community uh, by the United States, European Union, the big European countries and the Council of Europe that the Parliament should now go and start its, uh, its work. And there the political debate, uh, on a, a very uh, heated uh, political debate, 
should take place and together all representatives should look for a uh, electoral and judicial reform that will guarantee that the next elections are not only relatively free but also uh, fair enough. Deanie Cox, thanks very much indeed for joining me. Have a very good day. Bye-bye.